for the last 10 years I've been traveling like kind of non-stop chasing wherever it's snowing. It's like looking at the weather, it's going to snow in Idaho. We're going to drive to Idaho super fast. It's snowing a ton in Japan. We go to Japan. And so that's like my life. It's just like running around chasing wherever it's snowing. Not to be spoiled, but I wanted to settle down a little bit and not travel so much. And so I built this mobile house to park up at the mountain at Mount Bachelor to like give me a project, an excuse to not travel anymore. And so I just stayed there for seven weeks and snowboarded every day. Dude, Welcome this aboard. Is amazing. Thank you. What is it on? Uh, 1953 GMC fire truck. Fire truck? Wow. Yeah. There's a lot of campers at the parking lot. I think it's a growing community, like at all the ski resorts. More and more ski resorts are allowing people to camp in the parking lots because they want people there and they want them there as much as possible. So this was a way to force myself into snowboarding every day and kind of all day every day because when you're living here you don't have much else to do besides snowboard and little house projects. Never lived in a tiny house before, never lived in a van or done any of that stuff and wasn't really sure what I signed up for, but yeah, I liked it way more than I thought. I was way happier living here than anywhere else I've ever lived. It's just less distractions, it's just less time spent doing stuff I don't, don't want to do. You know, it's like not sitting in traffic, not I don't care about going out to eat anymore. Like I'd rather like cook on my dorky little stove. I don't know, just at my house, I just get caught up with bills and mail and cleaning and laundry and uh, being up here, you could just kind of like not deal with any of that. It's like the best escape from life and you're just like a 13 year old kid living in a tree fort. And I had the best real estate Central Oregon has to offer. Or like I looked out the door and like the chair lift is right there and I was just like, I just want to be focused on snowboarding every day. Just to be a little kid again, because that's what I did when I was 15. The plan was to finish building it, move up to Mount Bachelor for the seven weeks and then sell it or get rid of it. I wasn't, definitely wasn't married to this thing at that point by any means. Now I'm doing it again. Not making it. Been a little while, a little rusty. I've driven it a few different times and every time it usually breaks down, which usually means it runs out of gas. I had a lot of running out of gas situations because the gas gauge doesn't really work. And I thought that like a full tank of gas would probably give me more than uh, 25 miles, but it doesn't really. So. As you can hear, it sounds like it's about to fall apart. The first time I drove it, I came over to my parents' house and picked it up and started driving down this road. It was just kind of a downhill little scenario when I realized there weren't any brakes because it's old drum brakes and whatever happened to them, they were no longer there. And so trying to drive it back to my parents' house with no brakes whatsoever was uh, pretty exciting. But I love the horn. I mean, it's a uh, 1953 truck. But yeah, only 22,000 miles on it. She's a spring chicken. Just 64 wow. years old. And so it used to be a fire truck. 
Another guy started the renovations. He took off all the fire engine portions and put on a big, pretty much like, it's like a U-Haul box. If I was to build a tiny house structure, it wouldn't be as charismatic as this one. It wouldn't be quite so eye-catching. I'm parked here at my parents for the time being. That was like the most exciting phone call my mom had gotten. I was like, I'm coming back home. And she said, yay. But I'm still traveling all summer, snowboarding, and so I'm not here much. Didn't run out of gas. Runs like a champion. This is a big old fashioned fire hose. But like a lot of old firemen like coming and telling me like about these hoses. On the side over here, we have a bunch of gauges. This is stuff that came off like the original fire truck, 1953 fire truck portion. This is a big hose, that's a, the technical term. Um, and then this, I put this on, this is uh, my snowboard rack. The ladder's how I get up to the solar panels each morning um, because I was living in the snow with it. And so each morning, would have to go up and uh, clean the solar panels off the, off the roof. You gotta find the, the sturdy places to stand. So it's two 90 panels, so it's 180 watts up here, which was honestly more than enough. I thought I was gonna be underpowered. Even in the winter with all the snow, with all the cloudy days, I never ran out of electricity. If you don't have a 97 inch flat screen TV, you're not using that much electricity. So it was enough. Come on in. I didn't want anything that could break was one of my things in building this and just everything as simple as possible. So like all the electrical is outside of the walls and it's just these gold zero lights. And then those just plug in to my big battery bank there. And so it's all super plug and play for electrical stuff. That was easy. And then my solar panels plug directly into that. And then that feeds to this little battery bank, which like right now I have my phone plugged into. And then I also have this other little battery thing plugged into. And then I can also plug in my little lantern to that. And then, and then it charges up. So these lights are all plugged in? Right yeah, there. so this light plugs into that, this light plugs into that one, it's like tethered along. I kind of went overkill on the lighting. I was like, I don't want it to be a weird, dark little van. And I definitely went on the high end and with the white walls and living in the snow, it was pretty bright in here. It was like more a, it was more than I needed. It kind of felt like a uh, gallery at times, like all white walls and you like walked in and it'd be dark and it's super bright. Plumbing is also like a big one for people whether you get like a pump or something. I just got a water jug, super high tech, but uh, it's insulated so it doesn't freeze. And then the plumbing just shoots right out down through here. So it runs into either a gray tank down below or I can feed it just to the ground. But yeah, a little bit of counter space. You have two pots? Um, yeah, I have my pan <laughs> and both of them fit perfectly on my wood stove. Just living in a small space, it's like an endless scavenger hunt of finding stuff that fits together perfectly. You know, this pan has like a centimeter of spare room. Like wow. this is the pan for this stove. I also have this little guy. So this is my like grill. This is like where I make my veggies and artichokes. And this is where I get a little more deluxe. You can like bake bread in it and stuff. So they make these cubic mini wood stoves, mainly I think for marine use. So everyone would walk in and be like, oh my God, I saw this thing on the internet and be like, oh my God, that's way smaller than it looks on the internet. It is pretty small. The logs that you have to fit in there are like seven inches. You have to have miniature wood for your miniature stove. But uh, it heats this whole space totally, totally fine. This is the bigger model. For any space smaller than this, I'd recommend using the smaller one because it gets pretty hot. It's pretty sweet. Also what's key is I drank a lot of tea in here. Miniature teapot also fits perfectly. And then yeah, you just don't need much. You got like a couple knives, magnetic rack, I have my dorky fruit basket. 
Yeah, you hang a lot, huh? Yeah, tons and tons of hooks. Especially I was living here in the winter, so everything was wet all the time. So like you have a wet jacket, wet pants, long underwear, gloves, hat. You want everything to be able to hang and on hooks, goggles, dry out these. Everything has a place. Hello. Hi. You must be dad. I am. I like <laughs> so what do you think you're sending here out in your driveway? <laughs> oh, we, we love it. We, we, yeah, he could stay here forever. And you have a couple tiny houses here now, it looks like? Well, it's not ours. That's some friends and yeah. they built that. He moved it here when it was just, he had all the framing done on the bed. I think that was it. You kind of have a tiny house community going here without really meaning to. Sure. Unintentional. Yeah, sort of, sort of. Okay. Because I was actually, I was, uh, I just went and test drove a different fire truck that I was thinking about building into a little tiny house. Oh, I... And I was like talking to my mom and I was like, oh, I found this really cool fire truck. And she was like, you cannot buy another fire truck while you still have another useless fire truck out at our house. And I was like, man, yeah, it's pretty reasonable, I guess. I don't know if I need two fire trucks in my life. But it looks very different now after Austin did what he did to it. There was two by fours in here and that was about it. I had no idea what I was doing, which I think is kind of best case scenario. There's so many blogs and so many people talking about their build outs and you can just spend days, weeks, months or years. But I had like a super short timeline and so I didn't read much and I just tried to think of what like worked for me and I think every person is different so you just kind of got to do it and then see what works and then move into it and then you like make tweaks from there. The more modular everything can be, the better. So table flips down, chairs flip up, and then you got room for like a dance party. Um, I do yoga after snowboarding it's because my body is falling apart. The floors, the person that started this whole project like milled a tree that was on his property. Unfortunately though, it has shrunk so much. Even after sitting here for like five years, still after I put it in, we got like these huge gaps. And you can see it in the ceiling too. There's even bigger gaps. Oh yeah, oh wow. Which these were no gaps when I first, first set it up. Some of it, you know, this is almost like a full inch that it shrunk, which is kind of just impressive. This is uh, for, my Asmo, which is a snowboard without any bindings on it. This is my best invention. I didn't have much in here when I moved in. Like I got this put in the day I moved into it up in the mountain. And so then I was like, all right, I got my heat. I can move up to the mountain and I'll figure the rest out once I get there. And I was trying to dry my boots and I was thinking to try to like mount them underneath, but it wasn't hot enough. And so then I put up this rope and I was trying to like balance them so they'd sit in the rope, but they're kind of in your way and they'd fall in the middle of the night and so I just drilled the bindings into the ceiling. The boots go in, it hangs facing down and all the hot air gets caught into it and every morning I'd have like perfectly warmed up heat moldable boots, so that was a pretty sweet. Uh, one really nice thing about this is how tall the ceilings are. Like anyone that lives in a van or right. they can barely stand up or they're crouched down like this, even sprinter vans, you know, you're like, you hit your head on something all the time. And so this is great because I got like I don't know, eight feet or... And then here, I guess we have the couch storage underneath Bernie's legs here. In this one, we have wood storage, mini hatchet. What do you do with a hatchet? I chop up my wood to make it more mini wood. Wow. All my wood goes in there when it's full. It's like four or five days worth of keeping it pretty warm up here. Wow. And then this was like a closed drawer. And then this generally was like my guest clothes drawer. So what I'm sitting on, this is the couch and then also the guest bed. So yeah, right now it's in couch mode. I've got two hooks. And then also there's more storage back behind. There's some stuff and then it folds down to the guest's bed. And then it goes back to couch mode. Did you make this? Um, I did. Yeah, I mean, it's just like two by fours and plywood. I got two inch medium density foam. For my bed, I went four inch, but then for this, you know, you don't want people to stand for too long. So you go for the two inch there. Some throw pillows, cause everyone needs throw pillows, even in a tiny house. Painted everything white. White makes everything look better if it's clean, I guess. I mean, it's just a piece of plywood that you cut. Oh, hinges, those are like $2. Two little chains. I wanted these to be, uh, these are supposed to be like ropes, but instead they're that. 
There's some stuff back there right now, so it's not laying flat, but it does lay flat. Yeah. Simple, simple, simple. I go into those sprinter vans that are like $150,000 or whatever. You know, everyone talking about their tiny houses, they're like, I just want to simplify and check out and yada, yada, yada. And then I like walk into these sprinter vans and there's like all these electronics and plumbing and the main motherboard and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, this is complicated. This is more confusing than my house. So that was the real goal with this was actually making it simple. This is my Himalayan suit, which I like named Bernie, I guess. This is just like what I do all my chores in, I guess. I'm struggling on my water, freezing on my drain line because it sags a little bit when it goes into this, my bigger water reservoir. <laughs> this is made to climb Mount Everest. And like I got it and everyone was asking me like, oh my God, that's so sweet. You got one of those suits. Like what mountain are you climbing? Where are you going? I was like, I'm just wearing around the house. Like I'm just going to be super cozy. <laughs> I'll have a flowing sink tonight. So I never had to sleep in a snowbank, but if, if I did, I was ready. He's great and he just kind of kept me company and it also looked like there was someone at the house whenever I was gone. And then this is my bed. You got full seating height, which is nice up here. Temperature difference is pretty wild, just like just from down there and I'd like have the fire blaze in and then jump up in bed and be like blazing hot at night. There's four inches of foam that I got cut, but it's easy to go too firm. So go less firm than you think. Little lanterns. This is a goal zero lantern. So this just plugs into my goal zero battery bank. All works together, just plugs into there. Little bookshelf. Oh, I read this one. First week is super cold in here. This is a Everest tragedy book. And so I was like wearing that suit, reading this book and they're like all wearing that suit as well. So I like, and it was like super windy up here and it's dark out. And I was like, I can imagine if I was on top of Everest. But really I'm in the parking lot of Mount Bachelor wearing a Himalayan suit. I forget what the total square footage is. I think it's, it's like 90-ish, it's under 100. Under 100 square feet, but I'd have five, six, seven people in here and it still would feel all right. And there's no bathroom in here, as you'll notice, but Mount Bachelor totally supports the RV living styles. So yeah, they have bathrooms and showers up there. So yeah, I built it with no bathroom. I definitely don't have any regrets about that. I don't know, I, I'm a, a regular guy. So I go to the lodge in the morning and I go pee outside if need to be. And you don't need more than 100 square feet in your life, I guess. Front door is just normal front door. I was actually like remodeling my normal house and it had an extra door. Paint job didn't go so well, as you can see, it didn't really last. I was doing that as well, like the night before I moved into it, so it was like snowing outside. But only thing I'm really missing is I need like a fan or some type of ventilation. For a while I was staying up at the mountain and like I'd get all these drips inside and I was panicking because I thought there was a roof leak and I'd, so I'd go up on the roof looking for holes, looking for holes. At one point I thought I found a couple, so I was pouring candle wax. I like had a torch and a candle and was like melting candle wax onto the roof to try to do like a sketchy patch job. What eventually I realized was just condensation build up from the inside because there's no, once I finally sealed up the windows so snow wasn't blowing in from the outside, I didn't have uh, any ventilation. And so I need to put in a fan of some sort. Um, thinking right here actually. A little bit of condensation. That's also one of the main reasons I went with a wood stove rather than like a propane Dickinson heater or something like that because wood stoves, it's a much drier heat. And I knew there was going to be so much moisture and wet stuff from wet snowboard boots and outerwear and just snow getting inside. I wanted it to like dry out as much as possible. And yeah, so it's the original. It's like a six cylinder gas engine. I don't know much about it. I know it doesn't work very well. But it worked good enough. It got me up to the mountain. Eventually I had to get it towed down, but it got me to the mountain. 
I drove around a little bit just because uh, when they had like big storms, they'd need you to move your vehicle so they could like plow around you. It did that and then it kind of slowly died as the season went on. Let's give it a shot. Pretty impressive. Yeah. Likes the warmer, uh, warmer climate a little bit more than the cold temperatures, I guess. Well, that's bold. You're gonna move it. Yeah, this is what you do. When you move. Travel <laughs> mode. Ta-da! Done. Ready to go. We set those in the sink. Okay. Travel mode. Ready. Ooh. Oh gosh. That's so you have thing. a campaign, right? Yeah. The whole idea behind it is just like promoting tap water over energy drinks in action sports. They really dominate action sports, like every single athlete, every single event, every single video is sponsored. And the whole deal is just like telling 13 year old kids that they need to drink energy drinks. And me and my friend that is also a pro snowboarder, we're just like, this is kind of ridiculous. It's all a lie. None of the pro snowboarders that promote it actually drink it. We just started drawing the words drink water on our snowboard one year. And then we started making some sweatshirts and t-shirts and all of a sudden like kids were writing us emails and all the stuff like little kids thinking that tap water is cool, quote unquote. It's kind of funny, but kind of awesome, I guess. Oh. So yeah, this fall I'm doing Diesel swap, four wheel drive, and then I want like a rooftop deck, I think is in the plans too. Cause it's pretty good uh, viewing platform. A rooftop tent would be kind of nice as like a guest bedroom. We'll see if I go that way or just like a dance party, a rooftop deck situation. Um, and four wheel drive so I can go places in the snow. It's the plan.